My name is Austin. Welcome to my channel. Si hablas español. Yo me llamo Agustin. Agustin tin tin. All right, so I want to start off this video by talking about an insecurity I had as a kid, and I think that you might be able to relate. So let's start off with that. When I was a kid, there was a popular TV show on MTV called MTV Cribs, where celebrities would give tours of their giant houses full of extravagant stuff beautiful people in garages full of cars. It was the life of the rich and famous. And as a kid, I felt very insignificant and insecure watching this stuff because I wasn't living in a big house with a bunch of stuff. And the way they portrayed happiness and value on this show was by accumulating a bunch of material possessions as if these people were better than me because they had 10 cars and a giant house and a private pool. And for a while, I believed this. And I believed that I wasn't enough and I wouldn't be enough until I had what these people had. Until my mindset started to change when I was 19 years old and I left the country for the first time to travel. And I caught the travel bug and I traveled on and off for about eight years. And if I could summarize what I learned in those eight years of traveling in one sentence, it would be people do different things in different places. There isn't just one way of thinking in this world. People find happiness and joy through a lot of different things. And in those trips, some of the richest people I have ever met were people with very little money. And I realized that I didn't want what they were showing on this TV show, MTV Cribs. I didn't want a big house and a bunch of nice cars. I would be much happier with less stuff in more time. And I started to embrace this idea of financial minimalism. And financial minimalism is using your money intentionally in a way that brings value into your life, which naturally results in less spending. Because I believe that when you live with intention in less, that is ultimately a richer life. That's just my belief. So in this video, I want to talk about 10 reasons why I choose to be a financial minimalist. Pero antes de empezar, por favor, haga clic en el botón me gusta. Por favor, no sea malito. And if you don't speak Spanish, please Click the like button, subscribe to my channel. I would really appreciate it. It would make me a happy camper. And as they say in Ecuadorian Spanish, don't be a little bad boy. Don't be a little bad girl. So let's begin. in the first reason is I want to remain human. Now I always like to start off my videos with one of the most absurd examples I can think of to get you hooked and think, what else does this guy have to say? So let's take a look at someone we all know, and that's Jeff Bezos. Now, a couple months ago, he was trying to get a bridge deconstructed so he could get his yacht to the ocean. Now, I'm not saying that Jeff Bezos is a good guy or a bad guy. What I'm saying is that once you're trying to deconstruct bridges to get your yacht passed, you're no longer a human. Now, I'm not saying that he's a lizard. What I'm saying is he has lost his ability to relate to anybody. We often look at people with extravagant lives like his as something that only consists of gains with big houses, private tennis courts, and yachts. And that sounds nice and all, but we never ask ourselves, what do you lose when you pursue that path? Well, I think that you lose community, you lose relatability, and in some ways, I think you lose what it means to be a human because being a human is about relating to other humans. So I choose to be a financial minimalist and not live a lavish life because I don't want to lose relatability. Because being a human is about having the ability to feel, relate, and associate with people from all walks of life. And the second reason I choose to be a financial minimalist is because community is a human need. Now, if you've seen some of my videos, you'll know that I lived in a country called Ecuador for two years. And something that you notice when you're living in Latin America is they have an extremely strong family and community structure. For the two years that I was living in Ecuador, I think I saw two homeless people in the entire country. And the reason for that, I think, is because the family and community structure is so strong that under no circumstances would that ever happen. And Ecuador is a country that's very small and doesn't really have a lot of nice things. Everything fancy like Nike shoes is imported and it's extremely expensive. So they don't really have a consumerism society. And what you learn from a society that doesn't have the option to find happiness and fulfillment through material possessions is that you end up searching for it through community. And you just get so much fulfillment out of it. I mean, there were parties and parades every single day and you just feel like you're a part of something bigger than yourself. And you know, there's no such thing as better or worse with culture. Things are just different. 
But what you learn living in a community-based culture for two years is how important community is for your mental health because it makes you feel human. It makes you feel like you're a part of something bigger than yourself. And in that Jeff Bezos example, once you lose relatability, you can't be a part of the community anymore because you're no longer equal to people. So I choose to be a financial minimalist because I'd rather find joy through community than material possessions. You know, if we compare ourselves to other animals, we humans, we don't have sharp teeth. We don't have super strength or super speed. What has made our species survive up to now is community and working together. And that is something that's very important to our species. And reason number three is we only get one life. Last week, I had a friend come visit me that had just quit her job and was going to travel for a bit. And when she started talking about why she quit her job to travel, she said, we only get one life. People are living like they're going to get more than one. And it really struck me when she said this because it's so true. Our society is so future oriented and so serious that we forget that this is the only life we're ever going to get and tomorrow isn't guaranteed. And the pandemic was a reminder to all of us that tomorrow isn't guaranteed. Money is important. It's important to plan for your future, but you have to remember that tomorrow isn't guaranteed. All money is, is a tool to give you your time back and give you more options in life. So I choose to be a financial minimalist because I understand that money equals options. I like to use my money intentionally so I can spend less time worrying about money and more time just living because we only get one life. And reason number four is I like diversity in thoughts. I went to community college my first two years of school. And if you're young watching this and about to go to college, go to community college. One of the key reasons I graduated college debt free is because I spent my first two years in community college, which saved me an insane amount of money. But one thing that's cool about community college is that since it's much more affordable, there's a very diverse group of people with a very diverse group of thoughts. There were people from low economic backgrounds, retired people learning for fun, and tons of international students. And when you're in that setting and there's a discussion, you just get so many different perspectives. It's a great environment to learn in because not everyone thinks the same. You know, I'm at an interesting point on my YouTube journey where I read the comments and I see people disagree with what I say or have a different perspective and that's okay. That's what makes the world beautiful. I don't want everyone to think the way that I think because think how boring the world would be if everyone thought the same. The reality with money is that money can separate people and prevent diversity of thoughts. And if you limit yourself to only getting one perspective in life, then you miss out on the extremely beautiful diversity of life. So I choose to be a financial minimalist because I don't want money to prevent me from meeting people from different walks of life. If you limit yourself to only getting to know one type of person, then you miss out on a wealth of knowledge. And reason number five is I love creativity. When I was living in Ecuador, I was making $570 a month. My rent was $200, so after that, I had $370 for everything else. And what you learn when you're living that cheap and you don't have the option for convenience or even taking on debt is that you end up being extremely creative in how you live. I've said this in many of my videos, but when I was living there, I couldn't afford furniture, so I made all my furniture out of fruit crates. And it was funny going to the market to buy 10 fruit crates because I know they were thinking, what is this gringo going to do with 10 fruit crates? Generally, when you spend less money, you become more creative because you don't have the convenience and the easiness that comes with spending money. During that time, I got to learn Spanish. I got to play guitar better. I got to learn how to make furniture. And it was because I didn't have that much money, so my life was much more creative. So I choose to be a financial minimalist because I know when you live with less, you end up being more creative in life. I don't want money and convenience to prevent me from being creative in my life, so I just prefer to live with less. And reason number six is I want to own my stuff. Sometimes when you see somebody with a lot of stuff, you start to question who's owning who. Is the person owning the stuff or is the stuff owning the person? I mean, who's in control? And stuff can control people three ways. One, through debt. Two, lack of mobility. And three, through mental clutter. There's nothing wrong with stuff. I mean, I personally don't believe in just owning a few things. If you look around my apartment, you'll notice there's a lot of things. But when I add something in my life, I'm extremely cautious and intentional because I don't want these things to trap me and prevent me from living my life. 
And I choose to be a financial minimalist because I don't want abundance of material possessions to trap me. Stuff can own you and keep you in debt if you're not intentional about your decisions. And reason number seven is to live with imagination. We have a very linear way of thinking in the United States where we want everything to be based off of logic and reason. And usually economics are the main thing that make up the headline. But this constant focus on money steals from imagination. I like to simplify my finances so my life doesn't revolve around money, despite me making videos about money all the time. But I don't want to worry if the market's up or down. I just want to live my life creative and use imagination to make my life richer. And I choose to be a financial minimalist because I don't want money to stunt my ability to use my imagination. I think life is much richer when you're able to use imagination. So I just like to live with less so I can have more imagination in my life. And reason number eight is to keep appreciation. We've reached the end of winter in Colorado and winters can be really tough for me because of the lack of light and how cold it can get. But now that we're entering summer, you just have this deep appreciation for the longer days and the warmer weather and you just want to seize every single moment of summer because it's so short. There's a lyric in a song by Jason Mraz where he says, the absence of the light is a necessary part. I don't want to sound like a broken record at this point, but when you live in abundance and you're constantly treating yourself, you lose the appreciation of light. It's necessary to have some pain and some struggle in life so you can get that appreciation. And I choose to be a financial minimalist because I believe the absence of the light is a necessary part. I think when you have too much, you lose appreciation. And reason number nine is to keep simplicity. Two years ago, I got in my car and I decided to move to Colorado. And on that journey from the east to the west, I made a couple stops to meet friends. My last stop was meeting an old Ecuadorian colleague that I worked with in Ecuador. And it was interesting because our relationship revolved around me being the confused foreigner pointing out things in Ecuador. But this time, he was the foreigner living in the United States. And when I asked him what he thought was strange about the United States, he started talking about yards and how much time he has to spend on his yard, which he didn't like. And he said that he would rather just spend his time playing soccer or volleyball. When you have more stuff, you have more responsibilities. People get enjoyment out of different things. Some people enjoy yard work, but other people don't. I prefer not to spend a bunch of money on stuff because I don't want the responsibility that comes with the stuff. And I choose to be a financial minimalist because I don't want a lot of responsibilities and I want a more simplistic life. I prefer simplicity over complexity, but that's just my opinion. And the final reason, reason number 10, is to keep ownership of my life. I like to figure out how to do things on my own instead of paying someone to do it, like changing my oil or trying to fix something in my car because it's cheaper, but it also gives me a certain pride and ownership over my stuff. And so I choose to be a financial minimalist because when you do things on your own, you get more ownership on your life. Well. That's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you made it this far, I applaud you. But thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like. Subscribe to my channel. Muchas gracias como siempre. Me encanta el acento venezolano. Y por eso siempre digo, nos vemos.